Hey guys, welcome back to the Almost Friday Podcast. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp, okay? Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change in life. Visit betterhelp.com slash beers today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash beers for 10% off your first month. You think it, you think it would work on a guy like me? Yeah. All right, I'll give it a try. And you should too. Let's get into the episode. Welcome back to the Almost Friday Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, fellas... Introduce yourselves to the people at home. Oh, uh, you camera? might have heard of them. Oh, yeah, I guess any camera. What's up, guys? <laughs> hey, guys, I'm Chad. And I'm JT. And we're from the Going Deep Universe. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, for coming. We're cooking. Woo! Um, I wanted to start off. Can we do a, a beef of the week? Yeah. Oh, I would yeah. love to. Yeah. Do you have a beef? I do have a beef of the week. Kick it off, dude. My beef of the week is people that um, say... Uh, married couples that say we're trying for a baby. Oh, I don't like that you're putting that in my head because what I'm hearing is like, yeah, I'm just like I'm raw dogging my wife. Over right. Over. right. Yeah. If or, that's family, that's gonna make your stomach turn. Yeah. Or you know what I'm hearing is it might not work, and then we'll all feel bad for you for eternity. That's also <laughs> that's rough, dude. <laughs> There's no good. That's outcome. rough. Yeah. Because then it's like a, a year later, you're like, so you guys are still trying, and then you're like, so do her eggs not work? Is his sperm bad? Damn. You start thinking, whose fault is it? Yeah, you're kind but of. It's no one's fault. No one's fault, but you're planting seeds in everyone's life around you. What? We're gonna... What motivated? That, do you have a sister that's trying? No, um, I just that's good, I, good cue. Yeah. That is trying? that's a great cue. Um, it's actually something my girlfriend brought up. It was her beef oh. of the week, oh. and, I, and I decided that's you know what that's my beef of the week too. Yeah. Bro, the empathy to carry that beef. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't want her to carry it herself yeah. alone. That's huge. Yeah. What if you had a girlfriend that like literally said, I need you to, when you tell people to say that we are trying because it's a unified front? Um, if <laughs> I don't I don't know how to answer that, um, I wouldn't be thrilled about it. I don't want to go around being like, yeah, we're trying. That's my whole point is I really don't want to be doing that at all. What are you going to say when it's your time? To say like we're trying to have a child? Yeah, what are you going to say? I'll wait until we get one. Mm. But what if people are like, hey, do you guys want to have kids? You're just going to say no, even if you are trying? I'll say stay tuned. Oh. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> that's just better, like, dramatic storytelling. Well, I'm, I'm theatrical. I'm like, keep your fucking eyes peeled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Some, a trained you thespian. Smell, you smell anything? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coming soon. I, uh, yeah, so I, someone just had a post where she's like, you know, we were trying and we did it the old-fashioned way. And I was like, damn, that sounds like doggy style. <laughs> yeah, what is that? Yeah, yeah, dude, she got porked. Does that mean no IVF? Is that like... You know, they were trying IVF. And then she's like, you know, his cream pie worked. That's awesome. Yeah, that was literally in the caption, his cream pie worked. <laughs> JT, you said something interesting. I saw a clip a long time ago, Before now that you're a father. This mm-hmm. was, uh, you, were just, you were saying, yeah, we weren't uh, necessarily trying, but, you know, if something, if it happened, it happened. Yes. Which was... Uh, an interesting perspective because it it would happen, right? No, mm-hmm. dude. So it was a surprise to me. So we we both were talking and and I, I attribute it to her, but she says it was both of us that that uh we're we're not trying, but we're not not trying. So we're just pulling the goalie. We're gonna see what happens. I thought because I was on finasteride Propecia to keep my hair that without DHT my sperm wouldn't be able to like metabolize into a child. It's not the case. Don't trust Google on that. I busted. <laughs> um, you know, and I made a kid too, <laughs> two twins. So yeah, it was. I just didn't think I. I didn't think I could do it. That totally explains it because I was just like, yeah, wouldn't that just? A lot of people said I was pretty dumb to not know that it would make a kid <laughs> so fast. I feel like yeah. I feel like it's you. You don't expect it to work. Uh, it the, just seems so difficult, especially it, nowadays with microplastics. You know. I thought oh, health wise, I thought there was no way I could. My yeah. batter was good. Yeah, <laughs> and and you read dad books, and a lot of dads have. They're like, I can't believe I did this. Like seventy percent of men don't even believe at first the kid is theirs because they can't believe they could even make a kid. Yeah. Men were, were I believe were riddled with self doubt. You know, I'd be floored. Yeah, yeah, but you can do it. Well, I I don't know if I want to, but I'm sure I can. <laughs> I'm looking at you, and I can tell you could do it. And you too, Leo. I don't Thank know. You. you guys could both come kids in a millisecond. This guy, him too. Thanks. The most. Thanks. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Sperm counts right here. Throw them up. Nice. Yeah, I heard they found like microplastics. You're just talking about that. Yeah. In, like, a, in a side of fetus. 
Is Dude, that, yeah. Is this what you're, you're referencing? They're everywhere. They're shrinking yeah. dongs. They're shrinking, shrinking gooch. Shrinking tanks. Oh, yes. I heard about that. Yeah. They're everywhere. It, it's scary because now every time I, I like have a water bottle or even just like a plastic cup, I'm like, is it, what is this doing? But yeah, part of me, you know, the part of me that's sort of like, maybe this is kind of like, like going back to your point, I'm like, maybe this is keeping my, you know, potency at bay for a bit while I don't want kids and then I can you know, switch to metal and just, yeah. yeah. I've had a lot of hot plastic water bottles before. Yeah. Are you going to say hot sex? No, no. <laughs> Leaves had some hot sex. I've had some hot sex. What do you, uh, you've had some hot plastic water bottles? Yeah, so I'm sure that my child's taint is going to be as small as it. Yeah. Is. It's going to be weird. Are, like, their kids' bodies are going to be different than the preceding generation for sure. Yeah. But do you think big this... assholes, little taints? Damn, dude. <laughs> weird. Not what happened pox. in this country, man? Yeah, man. It's just like, guys used to, to work in factories. <laughs> they had nice assholes there. Do you think? Uh, do you think it's like a natural part of evolution that intelligent species create things that make them kind of genderless and you know smooth? Probably. That, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. It's sort of like they're like this is our natural depopulation kind of thing. Yeah, I just a- I believe that we're the cocoon for AI. That's the right. Only, that's mm-hmm. the only belief I have about where. Where our evolution is leading us. Yeah. It's interesting. Are you speciest? What is speciest? Like, do you value humanity over artificial intelligence, or are you open to the idea that artificial intelligence could supplant us and maybe should? Ooh, that's a great question. I got to be careful with my answer, too, just in case. Uh, You don't want to alienate your listeners, which I'm assuming is mostly humanoids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, for now. I would say say they're equal. I'm, I'm planning for the future. Equal lives... They're both they're both valued the same. You're making it sound like that's the right answer. I don't even know if there is a right answer. Well, when they smart hedge, yeah, I'm hedging. I just like AI because it just helps with so much. Like, yeah, can write your resume and like I this shit I never had to do before. Detect pancreatic cancer. (laughs) Dude, did you guys have you been following the Sam Altman stuff? I'm all over it, dude. I can't. I can't. I've heard some spooky rumors. Wait, what is it? Sam Altman, the OpenAI uh, CEO, they, they, they like the board fired him, and then four days later he's back in, which mm. is like never. I, I, that doesn't ever happen. So he's back in now. He's back in four day hiatus. Wait, is he back? I thought they made a permanent move to not bring him back. So I maybe okay. I heard he was fired. Four days later, he's back in. Did they take him out again? I think they almost brought him back, and now he's gone. Interesting. Is he, okay. is he at Microsoft now? I think that's where he's going. Dude, I heard a theory. I heard. That I, have no idea. I heard that they created some wild shit, and he kind of let it go haywire. And they're like, "Dude, you got to get out of here." But I, I, I don't know. But I think, I think they already went too far. Yeah, they definitely did. Um, yeah. But they they call it um, AGI, which is yeah. like um, artificial general intelligence, which is like economically they're. Uh, Go. I'm so uneducated. Just on go, it, baby, go. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's right or I wrong. I don't think so. I don't think it matters. They, basically, he wanted to commercialize it before there was like checks and balances on it. And there were staff researchers within the company that were like, hey, this is going to get out of control. And this is a genuine threat to humanity. You have to stop him. That's the rumor why they kicked him out, that they created something that they have no control over. Mm. Well, and, and I think OpenAI was started as a nonprofit company. And so mm. the board is all nonprofit people who were, their mission was to like put safe parameters on AI. And then they were like, well, we can't keep up with everyone unless we make money. So they started making money. And then I think that's when Sam was like, his brain went, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and the idea started getting too big. And the board was like, whoa, like we're kind of safe academic dudes. This is crazy. And they were like, well, move or get out of the way. And they're like, no, you go. Wow. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Dude, another thing about Sam Altman is he tweezes his eyebrows. Have you seen this? Really? Take a good look at his face. He tweezes that shit. That's, that's, that's the weird. kind of guy that would. Dude, that, yeah, that's the kind of guy that I think would create the Terminator. Is he tweezing the middle part? Or? No, dude, they're thin. Oh, they're really that's thin. That's weird. Look, yeah, is wait, the, wait, and if he's tweezing missing, that, what right? else is he tweezing? <laughs> yeah, you got to think he's lasering his pubes at that point, and I'm not going to trust you. At all, if you're lasering your pubes <laughs> off. Laser <laughs> pube removal. Yeah, Just yeah, watch dude. the esthetician's face when they do it. <laughs> Can you imagine the guy creating AI coming in the steam room with just like a, a bare cock, and you're like, whoa, dude. Yeah. You're, well, you're one of those guys? <laughs> like, like no, 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 no razor burn or anything? Oh, I wanted to pull up that trailer of the, uh, what's it called? 
the thing Tyler sent us this oh morning. Oh my god, yeah. I didn't watch it yet though. It's um you know how uh what's his name? Ben Shapiro has that movie company. Mm -hmm. He there's a trailer for a movie that dropped I think this morning about like a guy claiming he's a woman and yeah. dominating the WNBA. I saw that. Joanna man. The, exactly. Okay, that's what that's, I said. Yeah. It's it's that movie was like a little ahead of its, ahead of, ahead yeah. of its time. I would say. Yeah. What's Vivica A. Fox was in that. Ooh, I don't even know that. Who's that? Vivica A. Fox, the actress. That is an incredible name. She's beautiful. Yeah. 50 Cent and her actually dated, and the way he swung it was he won an award, I think at like this, the BET Awards, and he goes, first off, I want to thank myself for betting on me and getting to this place, and also, I want to thank Vivica A. Fox for wearing that dress. <laughs> and they cut to her, and she's like, it is cool. That's awesome. You guys ever shot your shot publicly like that? No, no. I never could. I think the rejection would end my career if I did something like that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is a hypothetical. I have a, a girlfriend I love. But if I shot my shot publicly and it didn't work out, I would have to move back home and do sales. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I really think that, that, that I would make that decision. Mm. I would just look like I feel like a... A real Unabomber type, just like on Instagram Live, mm. just like inviting this person to join my live. <laughs> be like, Monica. All right, we got five listeners in here. We'll wait for some more people to join. <laughs> invite her in here. Have you guys? Have we shot? Uh, dude, I would. I would for sure do it. And then if I, if she bailed, I don't know what I'd do. I just do squats, I guess. <laughs> just fucking hit the weights. I do Equinox, not the Flex, but. Ooh, wow. um, it's uh, you know, good facility, but doesn't have like that grit that you're looking for. If you're gonna it's flex. Too, it should be about the gym. Yeah, it's kind of the Sam Altman mm -hmm. of gyms. Mm. A little too manicured. It's getting out of control. Yeah, it's got bare. The board's pubes. about to turn on the owner. <laughs> yeah. I, I have uh, I got the garage set up. Yeah, your black nice. mold completely covering the ceiling. Mm. Uh, brown widow spider eggs in every yeah. corner. Nice. Roaches everywhere. But I go in there, and I grind it out. And my lungs, by the end of it, were covered in a layer of, like a millimeter layer of dust. That's I think that's a character. You ask a guy about his home gym and he just talks about all the insects that are there. Yeah. <laughs> that My little brother boned before me. Really? Yeah. What was and, that like? Dude, it was so hard on me. It was crazy. Because <laughs> he was like, he started bringing girls home and all my friends were like, what the hell's going on there? Like, well, you're not carrying your weight. I was like, I'm trying, I'm trying. And then one time we were playing beer pong and it was my brother was two years younger. It was like his friends versus my friends. And my brother, he was like, I lost my virginity before him. And everyone was like, oh. And I was like, no, he didn't. He's a virgin. He's a virgin. And it turned out we were both virgins when we got into that argument. <laughs> Just trying to flay each other. That's, that is a little emasculating, though, when you're yeah. a younger boy. It was How old were you? I was 24 when I lost it. He was, like, young, like 21. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 24 is an interesting <laughs> age to lose it at. Yeah. I was, I was nervous. I was scared to be intimate with someone. I'd bring people home and my, my guy wouldn't fly. Um, and then I fell in love and we, we did it together and it was very nice. Dude, yeah. Love is when the it, key ingredient. It's yeah. the missing ingredient. I wouldn't trade it. Yeah, it was a good experience. She was very sweet. She says I confessed to her during sex. It was my first time, but I don't remember saying that. <laughs> confessed <laughs> that you loved her? That, that it was my first time having sex. Oh, okay. I told her like years later, I was like, you know, that was me losing my first She's like, yeah, you told me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like me. Did your dad uh, find out that your younger brother went first? I think that was a big reason I waited. My parents are uh, hedonists. A lot of images of sex around the house and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Very like, sometimes they would like shower naked and like I'd walk in and they'd like want to cover up stuff. Mm -hmm. And then... um. My dad thought I'd lost my virginity at like 14, so I was like mm. lying to him for like a decade about it. <laughs> He's like, you're wearing condoms, right? I was like in eighth grade. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Did he make you like switch rooms with your little brother? Like he upgraded him to yeah. brother status? he did. Once my brother started bringing girls home, I had to give my brother my car. He got my golf clubs. And uh, it just, it changed the whole dynamic. Like we got new nicknames. <laughs> my brother was like Buck. He was like strong. <laughs> and my nickname was uh, little bam bam <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was cool because it was like you know my brother deserved it like he was laying wood and like that's what's up like all respect to him and, like you know he'd bring these girls home they're moaning so loud mm -hmm. and like they would just say things like bam bam could never and it was it was real specific and like pointed but that's what motivates you you know to be tougher to bust more i had a brutal uh day one time because my sister's two years older so when she would bring her 
friends home in like middle school, I was like, oh my God, there's girls in my house. This is insane. And I would just listen to their conversations from outside their door and try mm. to like gain intel. And I heard them, one of my sister's friends say, uh, oh my God, your little brother is so hot. He's going to be so much hotter when he gets older. And I was like, fuck yeah. And my sister was like, ew, Liam. And they were like, no, Sean. And I was just <laughs> devastated. Oh, devastated. Oh, <laughs> devastated. devastated. I beat the shit out of my brother for no reason. Yeah. I was like, oh. That's when you kicked out of the door. Like, I'll show you hot. Yeah. Yeah. Magic Mike. Um, yeah. yeah. You like fight clubbed him. Like, I want to beat something up. I just That's beautiful. Him. I fucked him. Just to, yeah. <laughs> just to really. He woke up with a concussion, didn't know why. Yeah, yeah you didn't had know sex with him and he whispered, like, you are cute. Yeah. <laughs> like Ed Norton with Jared Leto. Yeah. Just destroy his face. And he was already better at sports than oh, me at that point. Dude. So I was dealing with that. And then that on top of it almost destroyed a relationship. Wow. Wow. My, my first time, I for some reason, I, I, got, I was nervous and I was like, you want a 69? So I just 69 the first time. Straight to 69. Oh, man. Dude, you just... <laughs> skipping all the steps. I do. I went straight to 69. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Some people are born creative. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It's pretty awesome. Someone insane. walked in on us. I was like, dude, I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's a sweet moment. I've never 69 Whoa. Yeah, dude, let's try it. I'm down. <laughs> I, I got to show you. Yeah. I'll show you the ropes. Please. What's your beef of the week? Hmm. Interesting. Well, that. he's always got something. And what's cooking? You aren't gonna believe this guy. Yeah, I don't know if it's a beef of the week. It's actually, it's this is just a thought I was having. Mm-hmm. More of a maybe, maybe it's not a beef of the week. But I was just thinking about uh, how it, it's normalized in college that if you walk in on your roommate jerking off, not the end of the world, right? Mm-hmm. But there are situations, and like I was just thinking because my roommate had a uh, a yoga ball. Mm-hmm. I just had this thought last night. I don't know why I had it. It was actually because I was writing that other thing. And I was like, if I walked in and he was fully naked sitting on a yoga ball and jacking off, would what would that do to us? That would change your relationship forever. I think so. But like, if I just worked, walked on him like jacking off, standing up, looking out the window, I'd be like, that's strange. But I think a yoga ball would affect me more. Mm. So I don't know if that says mm. more about me. or I'm, I want to I want to dive into why, how your brain ended up there. But we'll start with the yoga ball, I guess. Why a yoga ball? I don't know. I just think it's just like a really... Because I was thinking about getting one. I was like, what would it be like to jerk off in this? And I was like, oh my God, my roommate had one. What if mm-hmm. I walked in on him fully naked, sitting on it? Yeah, I don't know. I I walked in on my roommate once, uh, jaying off. Mm-hmm. We would do this bit where we would open the door and be like, caught you! Like, yeah, because we weren't actually... And one time he was fully jacking off, and I was screaming, I caught you jacking off. And yeah. that changed our relationship just for a day or two. Oh, interesting. He was um, ashamed of himself. Yeah, he was very ashamed. Just, oh. Like, I, I, I can still remember the look in his eyes of like, of like, you actually did. You actually did. Yeah. And I, I don't know. You don't get over that. I went to a boarding school, so it happened a lot really? for high school. Um, it got to a point where I would prop their door open. And, uh, you know, then they'd have to just walk over with their boner. <laughs> Dude, one time my friend Harrison, my friend Harrison, he's a good guy. <laughs> I walked in on him and he just stands up. His boner, he's like, no, no, no. <laughs> his boner's going like this way. <laughs> but it, I don't know, it was very, you lived in a dorm, you're like a teen yeah. and like we were showering together. And it was like, if you don't like, if you go in the stall, like that's like, we, yeah, we, I don't know. We were just obsessed with like, being naked in front of each other, which sounds in- interesting now, but it was fun at the time. No, I get that. It was the all boys. Uh, it was boys co-ed, but all boys dorm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was, bef- it was like pre, like it, we weren't even in self. I don't know. We were drinking Faderades in there. You know, it was like Faderades. Yeah, just, <laughs> just vodka and Gatorade. <laughs> and there was a no chance policy. So you, if you got caught with drugs and alcohol once you're out, so we just resorted to, you know, we'd eat like a bunch of nutmeg to get high. And, oh yeah yeah i think it's a good experiment when you like put a bunch of like adolescent boys in a dorm with no cell service and no tv what'll happen and then you just they're all just jacking off nature finds a way yeah uh, yeah i think everyone's tried the nutmeg thing at some point yeah have you tried it yeah i have yeah didn't work on me no kind of blue yeah. it's like you've heard of this right no there's like someone had the idea that you can get high off nutmeg yeah that's on like Arrowig or Arrowad. What is it? The website. Like What's up? No, this website like Arrowad. That'd be like this. This is the drug. Whatever. It mm-hmm. just gave you like a survey of like all the drugs. Oh. Um, but yeah, it just said if you eat a fuck ton, you get really high. But it didn't. 
Mm-hmm. It just ended up eating a bunch of spice. A lot of nutmeg. <laughs> just a lot of nutmeg. When I was in seventh grade, I found my dad's one hitter. And I was too afraid of smoking because I didn't want to get lung cancer. Mm -hmm. So I dumped it out and I ate it. And I (laughs) thought that I would get high. But my stomach hurt and my farts smelled like weed for like days. Uh. (laughs) It really, days. It was crazy. It didn't get you high at all? No. Not at all. Wow. Dude, my my dad found my one hitter and I thought he was going to yell at me for smoking weed. And then he went into my brother's room and brought back. My brother had a four foot bong. And he's like, this is what you smoke weed out of. (laughs) (laughs) So when did you guys start smoking weed? Oh, man. Super early, like 25 or so. Really? Yeah. You're late bloomer. Is that early? No. No, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like 25. My, I didn't smoke that much. I smoked occasionally. Then my brother moved to LA and he, he, he liked to smoke. <laughs> At one point, at one point, my brother was buying so much weed. His dealer thought he was selling it. <laughs> His dealer like texted my buddy Matt because that was like who connected us. And he, Matt was like, yo, are you guys selling? We were like, no, we're just smoking a lot, bro. <laughs> um, but yeah, my brother moved to LA and then me and him would just get crazy high and watch movies. And I've been smoking ever since. But no, I, I don't smoke that much now. I feel like it would be scary, anxiety-wise, having two babies. Oh, yeah. I didn't no, I was, I'm still on Sunday with the two babies. It, you know, it takes the edge off because I'm so stressed out with the two kids and then like work and stuff. When I smoke weed, I'll just chill and like kind of laugh about all of it. Yeah, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, mine is like a – puts me into a spiral if I take an edible or something. Mm. If I smoke. Well, those edibles will annihilate you too. I think it's any form of THC <coughs> makes my heart implode. Um, but I still do it anyway. I don't know why. Um, You'd rather be you still do than it? bored? I get scared. I scare myself. Oh, interesting. It's kind of fun. Yeah. It makes me think, I always come out of it clean. I'm like, okay, yeah, good. I got to work on that. I got to do this. I got to fix that. It kind of makes me more productive in a way. Interesting. By like shackling myself to the ground. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I'm I'm the same way where I I can't handle it. I I wanted to be a stoner like so badly in high school because everyone's like, dude, that's that's you. They were sexy. Yeah. I was like, I had like the grades, the demeanor everything <laughs> and uh everyone's like you're stoner right and i'm like dude pretty soon and then uh <laughs> and then i started smoking weed and it like at like 15 16 it didn't work i got i got paranoid and i was like I, this is terrible yeah you're like a tall guy who's bad at basketball where like, yeah come on man just do it and yeah like, no it doesn't work it's yeah not for me dude yeah it's a bummer but maybe i'll try doing it more my girlfriend smokes so i like to do it right before i go to bed take a little edible and then yeah. and then cry myself to sleep. So, I mean, the fu- the hardest I've ever laughed is I, I smoked in college and I watched Starship Troopers. You guys seen that? Great movie. What is that? Oh, you guys see? It's like sort of like a a parody of like the alien invasion movies. Um, and uh, <laughs> there's one. They're like training, and the guy they're like they're like the military training, and they're and they're, they're throwing knives at the fucking dartboard or whatever. And the guy's like, hit my hand. <laughs> he just like stabs his hand. I can't explain it. I, I fucked it up. But but the guy just basically stabs his hand. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> I like died laughing for like two days. When did this come out? 2005. Okay. I, was, I don't know why I was picturing like a... I think it's 2004. No, it's like 99. 97? Yeah, that, that seems right. Because I watched it when I was in like third or fourth grade. Taking a quick break to talk to you guys again about Prize Picks. It's a skill based, real money, daily fantasy sports game. How does it work? You pick two to six players, and if they will go more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money. On 25 any, times? 25 times on any entry, okay? Well, we better call Carpenter because my jaw just put a hole in the floor. We've done pretty good with our NFL picks, but I want to. Is that Valorant? Yeah. You heard of this? Valorant? I've heard of it. I don't know what it, Compu- what it is. I think it's like Counter-Strike, kind of. First-person shooter. What is that? Wawa Lee? Is he like the goat in the Valorant world? Let's choose Wawa Let's Lee. Let's choose Wawa Lee. What are our options what here? What is maps? One to two kills. Dude, more. More. It's He's, Wawa, it's Wawa I mean, Lee. I mean, it's Wawa Lee. More. And then um, Yusin at the top right. Uh, call me crazy. I'm going to say less. I think I got to go with less here, too. Because every dog has his day, and every day has its dog. That's what they say. Place that entry. If $20 is good with me, $20 to win $60, place the entry now. <gasps> now we got to stay tuned to Wawa Lee and Yusin. See what their Valorant scores are. 
Price Picks is currently operational in over 30 states and Canada, not Ontario. Price I didn't even I didn't even know there were that many states. So good on them for having so many. And Price Picks is the best way to have action on the game in states like California, Florida, Texas, Georgia, and over 70% of the United States. Check it out. Let's get back into the episode. How often do you guys go to the um what do you call it? The 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 city council? City council. We haven't gone in like a month or so, but we were doing like two a month for a bit there. Yeah, we were on a little bit of a... We were going a lot. On a run, yeah. It, it really varies. I mean, for a while, for the, like, you know, when we started doing it, f- for like three or four years, I'd say we go, you know, maybe like three or four times a year. Kind of whenever some an idea hit or just mm-hmm. we were like inspired to do it or it's like, you know, four months have gone by, let's go hit the council. But then we were like doing it a little bit more... Um, kind of like had like more of a schedule yeah um trying to be a little bit more topical with it when was uh, the first one you guys did it's like tw- six or seven years ago yeah right? 2017 uh how did you guys get that idea uh i just saw that people film city councils i was like yeah. oh this is amazing you can just speak here and i, I, I was like trying out the character I, I was trying to do it in like an alley g kind of way where i was like interviewing people on huntington beach i had no idea what i was doing i was like i didn't know how to like you know, do the setup or any of that stuff. I was just being an idiot, just, you know, trying to... Those are funny, though. You like it? Yeah, (laughs) dude, yeah. There's one guy I interviewed that was funny. Um, But, uh, and then we were... JT and I were sort of chatting, you know, sort of where to... Just going off ideas. I was just trying to make content. And then I came to him with this idea of the city council thing. I was like, what if we give, like, a speech? Mm -hmm. And then we had, like... You know, Paul Walker just... I, I'm obsessed with Paul Walker, so I was just, like, number one, naturally. And then we just wrote the speech out, and then it, I just did it. And I did it a few times. I went to, like, Glendale, West Hollywood, and then San Clemente. And then it went viral without us posting it. Right. It just, like, the San Clemente Times posted it. And then, it's awesome. Like, the next day, we're like, like, you know, you're viral right now? I was like, oh, fuck. So... Do they get excited when they see you guys now? Is it, like, the best part of their yeah. day? Yeah. It's it's funny, like they're like, all right, up next. So sometimes they'll be cool and they'll put us at the front of the meeting. Because sometimes <laughs> your the public comments at the back, so you're there for like six hours. Oh jeez. But sometimes they'll be like the mayor or something will come up to us, hey, good to see you guys. You guys up to something? They're always like trying to seem kind of yeah. cool and in on it. I'm always like, get away from me. But then they'll yeah. be like, hey, we're gonna put you guys up front. I'm like, yeah, nice, dude. Yeah, yeah. And then the cops are always the cops love the us. Cops That's awesome. Love yeah, yeah. Us. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, they give you like the motorcade when you pull up. <laughs> yeah, dude. They, well, in you. LA, the guy was like, "I'll make sure you guys get up." <laughs> and then uh, the cop, we were in Culver City, and the cops were like, "What's up? What's up, fellas?" And I'm like, "You know, I live here." I'm basically being like, "Protect me." Um, <laughs> and they're like, I'm, "Like, you know, I'm a resident here." And they're like, "Why don't you talk about the cops, man? Like, say something good about us." <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if that translates. But I do yeah, appreciate like, you guys. Yeah, that's what America's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's cool too. Sometimes you'll see the craziest shit at those city. Camps. Like we're kind of tame compared to a lot of the crazy people who go up in there. And you get to watch like serious stuff happen with the city sometimes, and that's that's always exciting. Yeah, I was wondering like, have you ever like done your shtick, and then as you're leaving, you hear like a dad behind you talking about how like his sick daughter doesn't get enough. Yes, oh, <laughs> we've, dude, we've, yeah. we've left like one or two because we were like. Yeah, it's too heavy. <laughs> yeah. we, did, we did one in Pasadena. We were going to do something about butthole sunning. And <laughs> so, sometimes it matters what the subject matter is, too. Because yeah. like, that one was like, all right, we're talking about butthole sunning. And it was COVID was happening. And they were reporting like the first death in L.A. County from it at the meeting. And then the second one was that a, a black fire chief got uh, fired. And um, a lot of people were saying it was discrimination. So there was a ton of black people there standing up for him. And then we were supposed to go next. And I was like, I think we might have to dip. <laughs> <laughs> How long had you been there at that point? <laughs> Two hours. Oh, that was a brutal one. Yeah, we yeah. just started looking at each other. And then we looked at, we, with our, at our director. And he, yeah. he, he was like losing his mind. But he was like, oh, I guess they always go up no matter what. He'd never seen us do it. Yeah. And then when we left, he was like, thank God. That would have been <laughs> awful. We were like, yeah, that would have been brutal. Yeah, we, did, we went to Calabasas like March 12th or 13th, 2020. Like when COVID really, lo- the lockdown started. Is it when Tom Hanks? got it and the nba shut down oh yeah i love remember that's, those moments yeah. yeah that was like when we we're like tom hanks got it and we're like oh <laughs> fuck man he's <laughs> real so we were we were like starting to film our show then and uh so we were going to we were going to multiple ones a week uh just trying to bank them for the show and um 
so it was like getting progressively worse and worse we went to like west hollywood they're like yeah we can handle this no problem then to glendale they're like here's some like safety precautions then we get to calabasas and they're like we've had a fatality and the mayor's crying and we were going to do something on schmoll island (laughs) and so we bailed on that one (laughs) we're like we went to costco i'm like i need to load up on supplies and then netflix was like we're shutting down production we're like all right um so uh yeah but it gets heavy in there a lot. Yeah, it does. You'll see some, some days it's boring. It's all just like weird minutia stuff. But then yeah. some days you're like, oh, this is like what they make movies about. This is like Aaron Brockovich or something. Yeah. Like yeah. That. And I'll be crying and then I'll wipe my tears and be like, we need a park for butthole, son. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the job. Yeah. Have you guys seen that movie Tread? Do you know what I'm talking about? The guy mm-hmm. that built a bulldozer and destroyed oh, the documentary. The yeah, yeah. No. The documentary. Documentary. Ooh, you guys would fucking love this. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> uh, okay, well, yeah. I, this guy basically, like, I think it was in Alaska, in Anchorage or something, or some suburb out of there. He the base the whole town turned against him, and he was complaining about everything. And it, there were all these like city council meetings, which is why I was bringing it up. But um, it was great because he, he had this plot of land that, like, he was arguing, he, like, he thought this was his property, and they were just like shrinking him, shrinking him. And there was just like the, this family in town that owned all the real estate. And he thought they were out to get him. He thought the mayor was out to get him. He just became completely obsessed with this idea that they all wanted his life to end. So it was Mm -hmm. like, cool. In his warehouse, just... Emily, pull this up. In secret, builds a tank. Look up Tread For over a year. Yeah. Builds a tank. Um, (laughs) Yeah. He and he left all these voice recordings that... uh, Yeah, that's probably a bad That's That's his thing Um, on the bottom left right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, look. Yeah, zoom in on that. So he... he, I think he was like a... um, uh, welder or something and he welded all like you know 10 or 20 tons of metal onto this bulldozer wow. drove it around knocked over local businesses wow there's recordings of people like making fun of him at city council he left recordings telling him that like like god told me to do all this wow like uh he would say every time he was a someone would almost catch him building the tank and then would just somehow not see it yeah he would just say this was god telling me i should do this Wow. Which is, he didn't kill anyone. <clears throat> he got killed. No, he killed. He, killed, he got he, killed. He shot himself in the head. It's true. He did kill himself inside wow. the tank. Why did he? He uh, lived out the dream though of of so many people. Yeah. Yeah. If he was a, I almost was hoping he'd be like a more sane guy, so that it'd be like more of like a righteous kind of Robin Hood shit like thing. He was he, honestly, he's just a guy with anger issues. Wow. That's the crazy. You guys got to watch, even though you know the like you know the ending going into it. Great documentary. I respect it though, because he had, uh, you know, everything that would make a mass shooter at his age, and mm-hmm. he just built a tank and just went about it a different it's route. Classic. Cool. Yeah. Old school. Which I appreciate. <laughs> Bare bones. Yeah. It's from man. the bootstraps. It's a real man right there. Yeah. I was I was just thinking it, it'd be funny if you guys were doing your spiel, and this is the guy behind you dude. about to complain <laughs> yeah. about we, we had a dude in Newport Beach. Again, there was like peak COVID. This guy clearly had COVID. He's like sweating and coughing everywhere. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, dude, he's wearing like a tank top. He's like got long hair, but he's like 80% bald. <laughs> you know, it's just <laughs> only in the back and it's super long. And he goes up there and he's like, we need to legalize sword fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude, this, he's, you, you're, if you're a man, you die with honor by the blade. <laughs> dude. <laughs> He was great. <laughs> you're looking at him. He's like, he's he's talking about it so normal in your head. You're almost like, maybe that's normal. <laughs> yeah. He had no like uh, self consciousness. I'd lo- I'd love to rewatch that. It was, it was so funny. That was the best. I was just so worried he was gonna touch me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he he was like really talking to us. Yeah, he kept coming close to me. I was like, Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, me, you and us, we're one the same, right? <laughs> yeah, we do the same thing. You talk yeah. about stuff, I talk about things, yeah. too. You know, you got good points, I got good points. And I was like, <laughs> good job up there, boys. You really <laughs> stuck it to him. I knew if I said six feet to him, like, that would be like, you know, inflame him. So yeah, I was yeah. like, uh, just, uh, I'm, my knee hurts. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, we haven't done much, uh, you know, man in the street sketch stuff, but we did something at Penn State where we would just walk around and try to get into a frat house and, you know, try to join the frat. And yeah. Most of the houses we went to, the kids were like, oh, what's up? And we're like, this is clearly a bit. And then just went along with it. But we mm-hmm. went to this one huge frat house where uh, we walk up, got the front door, recognizes us. He's being so cool about it. He's like, oh, yeah, let's run with the bit. And then his buddy comes downstairs, no idea what's going on. Yeah. Freaks out. Looks oh, nice. bad. He's like, 
Dropping the Fs, dropping the Rs. Everything. And yeah. we're just like, perfect. This is so funny. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, we're leaving. And he's like shoving us down the walkway. And then our buddy with the camera comes out. I dap up his friend. We're like, oh, that was so funny. And he just went, ha, 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 ha. oh. Yeah, I knew. I knew. I knew. And his friend was like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. He was right. just like, that's all on camera. Holy shit. And he came out to us and he's like, yo, can you guys just like, just like, you know, make sure I don't look like a douchebag. And I was like, that is impossible. <laughs> you were the meanest every, man I've ever met. Every dude. time you opened yeah. your mouth, it was the most hurtful thing anyone's ever said yeah. to me. Did he, uh, how'd it do online? The video did extremely well. Yeah. Uh, I hate doing that stuff, though. It yeah. gives me the most anxiety. Yeah, yeah. for sure. The, the, not the type of stuff you guys do, but the stuff, this was like, uh, irritate them, piss them off, and yeah. like get them riled up. Yeah, and like get them mad. I hate doing that. No, right. look at our best. I think we don't do that. We'll do like yeah. more like positive trolling. We'll call it. But yeah. we've done that stuff a million times too. And with some people, you don't feel bad because you're like, you you don't feel like you box them into it. But sometimes I'm like, that was a little unfair. We had one mean one that I still look back on fondly, which it was a it was a support group to get o- to overcome shyness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, that was great and we went in there and we're like we, we pretended we got the address wrong for like a house party we're like where's the party at and all these people <laughs> no. were like all these people were like get the get the hell out get the hell out and then but it was kind of what we were hoping is some of the shy guys were like if you don't leave I'm gonna beat the fuck out of you <laughs> awesome. and then we were like that's not very shy and then the one guy, <laughs> yeah. the one guy was like I'm over my shyness and then, <laughs> you yeah. cured him yeah, yeah we cured him and then we <laughs> left awesome. and we blurred everybody's faces out which I mm-hmm. uh, that was big. One man. guy, one guy, he's like, not so sure, <laughs> not so shy anymore, am I? Yeah, he's like, not so shy anymore, yeah. <laughs> Dude, well, how would they want to fight you? Yeah. Because we were just being loud at the front. We came and with like, a 30 rack. <laughs> I think they felt so vulnerable being at a shyness support group. They, everyone was like real small and timid and then, which I get, because, uh, you know, it's it's a hard thing to admit. And and then we were just standing at the front being loud and obnoxious and it, it took like three minutes to shoot. Yeah. It was fun. Jordan but, Lear was there. Yeah, I got a Man. lot of DMs afterwards. I've been like, this is the meanest thing you guys have ever done. Yeah, yeah. that doesn't sound very mean. Um, you know? Okay, good. Yeah. No, it sounds we, awesome. We had, we had one. I think the, one of the when I was the most freaked out was uh, we went to the Women's March. Yes. Uh, pretend, we acted like we thought it was like a marathon, like a race. And so we were like racing. And, we, and it was like the Women's March was starting. And we were at the front just like running, you know, like it's a marathon. And Nick Kroll's, like, girlfriend. It must have been his girlfriend. His girlfriend or someone. A his, lady he was close to, yeah. She, yeah, she's, and we were, she was yelling at us. She's like, this is, like, 2017. She's like, for Vine? Are you kidding me? And and <laughs> normally wouldn't really freak out, but it was, like, Nick Kroll's, like, girlfriend. We're like, oh, fuck, Nick Kroll's going to hate us, dude. <laughs> we were just all sad. But JT had a, a grid. He, like, had a great idea to turn it to like a story where we got yelled at and we were sad but then found redemption. Yeah, it was it kind of became the mix where it's like we go to something that's really sweet, liberal, we're dumb guys, we don't understand it, and then we get hip to what it is and then we just join in and are actually like good participants. And uh, that was like the first one. Because there's yeah. footage of us sad afterwards, but we were sad because all these women were yelling at us. And I will say everyone at the, the vast majority of people at the Women's March were really nice too. They, yeah. they like, liked the bit. It was like two or three people that yelled at us and then we got sad. They only got mad when we ran to the front. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. were like, that's but, too much. But the image yeah. is hilarious. It is. Because really we're at the front just like this. <laughs> the <laughs> Women's March and we're just like, yeah. Dude. Just yeah. two dudes leading the charge. For Vine, dude. Did, for Vine? Yeah, the first oh, year. What? The first year I went to the Women's March, I went just to support, but I, I got self-conscious and I did mushrooms, and then the second year I was filming a bit there, so I'm an imperfect ally for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, well, do you guys want to try some characters? Oh, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Taking a quick break from the pod to talk to you about 4 Wellness, okay? Oh, I love 4 Wellness. 4 Wellness is the best. They got the best stuff on the market. They're a new sponsor of the pod. 4 Wellness is founded by pro golfer Phil Mickelson. Wait, Phil Mickelson? I, I've been in a coma for the last 30 years. Who's that? He's the pro golfer, okay? One of the best athletes of all time, and he created the good stuff, okay, uh-huh. to battle arthritic inflammation. Well, you're telling me that guy who had arthritic inflammation did all that stuff in golf and used the good and stuff used the good stuff to come back and win the Masters. Did, well, this so this stuff comes from the Garden of Eden then? Yes, it does. One of our favorite for wellness products 
is the good stuff. It's so good. So good. It's a performance-based coffee supplement that will supercharge the natural benefits of your morning coffee and reduce the caffeine jitters, okay? Ditch the bad stuff like sugar, dairy, and artificial creamers. Gross. Okay? Fights inflam- inflammation. 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 I put it in my smoothies sometimes, too. It actually is delicious. It's really, it really It is. actually tastes amazing. So I like their gummies, too. Gummies are also phenomenal. Give these products a shot today by going to forwellness.com and use code FRIDAY for 25% off your first order. That's F-O-R-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S.com, forwellness.com, and use code FRIDAY for 25% off your first order for wellness. Driven by science, proven by athletes. I got three bags of the good stuff in my stomach right now. Let's get back on that episode. Yeah, do you want to start? Huh? Do you want to start? Do you want to start? You guys start. All right. I have, I have one. It sucks, though. Okay. This is um, um, Melvin Tree, mm. and we're at an Alcoholics Anonymous support group, and I'm, I'm gatekeeping. Oh, okay. And you're like, I guess you're going. Hi, guys. I'm Liam. Um, Hi, Liam. Liam. I'm an alcoholic. I just got my second DUI, and <laughs> that's really going to... Pretty much fuck up my whole life. Uh, and uh, there's just, uh, I start and I can't stop. And it's become <sighs> six days a week. I'm, I'm Six days a week you're drinking? At least I'd say. <laughs> uh, heavy. No, no, no crosstalk? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, this, guy's, this guy's drinking six days a week. So it's, it must be hard. Yeah, it's just. Uh, so you just started? No, this has been going on. So you on. just started drinking? No, I've been. I started drinking when I was eleven. Uh, <laughs> my dad's an alcoholic and late bloomer. My dad's an alcoholic, and I would just get into his liquor cabinet, and he didn't. Nobody watched over me, so I, I've just been kind of on a spiral since then. Yeah, my dad used to make me drink. That's. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. I, yeah, I had to suck my dad's dick for a drink once. What? So. Uh, Call me when you have to do that. I, I believe this is his share. Yeah. Please. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go on. Please enli- enli- enlighten us about your alcoholism. Um, <laughs> Six days a week. All right. I've never had to suck my dad's dick for. Yeah, I know. I could see it in your eyes when you walked in. Sorry. Sorry. I'm trying to be. I'm trying to support you. You. Why don't you go and I'll come after you. No, no. You got it. Please. It's his, it's his, it's his time. Guys, we whoever's talking, it's just got to be one at a time. You got it. <clears throat> yeah. So. Um, but I am happy to say that I, since the DUI, which was a week and a half ago, I haven't had a single drink. So <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for that. Wow, show. good job. Are you guys actually? <sighs> no, I'm sorry. That's that that mu- that must that must be hard for you. That must be hard for you. What's your BAC right now? Zero. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, so normally we. Uh, sorry. Normally we. Pick someone now. To Who the speak. fuck are you? I'm the, uh, well, the leader of the group, which is not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. <clears throat> that's, all, that's all I had to say. And it's how, group support. What gives you the uh, the authority here? Uh, I, I don't have an authority. We're all equals here, but we, we do an election every couple months, mm-hmm. and uh, I volunteered to uh, lead the group. And you and you you've you've struggled with alcoholism. I, I, I struggle with it every day. It's a disease. It's permanent. <laughs> but uh, through the grace of God, I get better. I think we all do. Um, wow. That's awesome. Because when I was at my worst, this it was is, bad. It was ugly. Yeah? Yeah. You ever have to suck your dad's dick for alcohol? You keep saying that. What do you mean? Every time I want to drink, I have to suck my dad's dick. That, um, that, that sounds like the disease talking. Why do you have to suck your dad's dick still? Because that's how you get the drink. You suck your dad's stick. That's how it's always been. Uh, I think we got to do some crosstalk here. Yeah, sir. I, I, what is your name? Melvin Tree. Uh, just stick with the first name. Uh, Melvin. Melvin. Do you, do you have a desire to stop drinking? God, no. I have a desire to stop sucking my dad's dick, but that's, I mean, that's how you, you go from that to... Right, well, they're, they're connected. Yeah, I mean, because he won't give me one unless I... How old are you? Huh? How old are you? 45. So you could uh, hypothetically buy alcohol from the store. Which we don't want you to do, but, yeah, if, you, but if, you, if you want it, you could. Wait, what? If you, if you wanted to get booze without first sucking your dad's dick, that would be possible. Kind of easy. 
My. Did they? Is this a law they just passed? No. No, this has been know. in effect for centuries. Wow. I, 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 I've been coming to meetings for been sober eight years. Can I still? Can I get a clap real quick? I can sober for eight years. Yeah, and just uh, confused. well done, brother. I've never um, seen anyone at the meetings who has had your particular experience. I don't know anybody else who sucks their dad's dick to get booze. So is this? But this is your first meeting, then? No. Nope. Nope. Been here in and out of the rooms for twelve years. Sober for eight. Wow. Can okay. I get some claps on the eight? Yeah. That's awesome. So maybe, guy, I know. Chime in. Um. Maybe. If you stopped drinking altogether, uh -huh. that would solve the you having to blow your dad mm. problem. But then how am I going to blow my dad if I'm not drinking? Do you want to blow your dad? I don't know. I thought that you guys could, would kind of figure that out. Well, I, I, think, I think what we're getting at is, is there's the disease of alcoholism, but underneath the disease is, is mm. the core wound that you're using alcohol to cope with. Mm. And it seems your core wound is um, wanting to suck your dad's dick. And then the alcoholism is a byproduct of, of coping with that desire. They're mm. comorbid. Yes, they're 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 mutually reinforcing. Hmm. You want to because the disease it's it's an expansive disease, sucking your dad's dick disease. Okay, you know, brother, I my sponsor told me something. He said, if you do everything the same, you're going to get the same results. So if you keep sucking your dad's dick. You're going to keep sucking it. Wow. Could I quote what? Dwayne The Rock Johnson? One day or day one. That's a choice you wow. have. Wow. Do, mm. do you also think if you could, because I'm going to venture a guess, your dad doesn't come. If you, do you feel like if you could get your dad to come, then you'd feel like it was okay to stop? Yeah, I mean, I just always want to make him happy, I guess. Yeah. Have you, I just, I'm getting some conflicting advice. I don't know what to do because he's, he is my sponsor. He's, Oh. Right over there. Um, uh, you? So you Melvin Tree Jr. Yeah, he's he's at mute though. Cool. Got um, kicked in the head with a horse. And, uh, so, uh, do you want to stop drinking, or do you want to stop sucking your dad's dick, or do you want him to come? I just want to be happy. I want him to be happy. Also, so your dad is a a deaf mute and dumb. Mm -hmm. How do you guys get to the part where he tells you to get booze, you have to suck his dick? He just gives me this look. Oh. Uh. <laughs> I can just tell. Right. Um, sir, so there's um, a different meeting. Uh -huh. it's, um, it's called uh, Sex Addicts Anonymous, and it's for people who... What is this one? This is for alcohol. Oh my god! Yeah. This is so we call it we call yeah. it the beverage program. Oh, this is so embarrassing. But if yeah. you're if you're uh, sexually humiliating your dad, there's a different room that can, is it that? Can yeah. get some help. Or if like you're raping your dad, I'm sure there's a different. Yeah, there's a different. Which room. Room. okay, so raping dad's that way, sexually humiliating. Right. Well, it's, it's called it's, it's called sex addicts anonymous, yeah. but they'll, they'll they'll cover some of that stuff. So I go out and take a right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, same church. Same church. Okay. Uh, leave a dollar. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're you know group supported. Thanks, guys. We don't take any donations. This has been eye opening. I'm glad, Melvin. Uh, thank you, Melvin. Thanks. Um, you can actually leave your dad. Yeah, yeah you guys. Leave, leave him here. Yeah, we'll look after him. Take a load off from me. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. Okay, that was that. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you make sure I don't speak by saying I'm here. Because you. No, <laughs> Fuck no, you. no offense, Emily. <laughs> I ruin Sometimes all of them. Sometimes you chime in and it goes south. <laughs> oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't know that's why it was. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, She'll throw a jackknife in the shallow end sometimes. That was great, man. That felt real. Like I, I feel place. I feel like I got a weight off my chest. Did you that at any weird. point have uh, an image of you blowing your actual dad during? I didn't day? actually. Really? I'm good about separating those stuff when you're making those kind of jokes. Okay, that's and good. <laughs> but yeah, now, are you, about... now are you maybe imagining it? <sighs> <clears throat> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Do you think you'd be like a brat about it? Like if I was sucking my dad's dick, I'd still be a brat. I'd be like, oh, you like that guy? <laughs> oh, is that your favorite? <laughs> your big boy sucks your big dick. <laughs> Oh, you're such a big man. And he'd be like, oh, his head sucks. And I'd be like, oh, does it suck, Dad? I think if I was getting head, I'd just say thank you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm I think a, you'd be, yeah. I but I'm a like fucker that. like that. <laughs> okay, do yours. All right. 
Wait, or, unless have you ever walked in on your parents banging? Yeah, a lot. Really? Because yeah. that shower thing made me think of that. Yeah, I've, I've walked in about four or five times. Four or five times. Yeah. Yeah. What was yeah, the worst so one? Long. The one when I was like four, because mm. I remember like in my child like dramatic memory of it. My, I walked into the room and I was like, "What the fuck?" And I started crying instantly. I ran to my room, and my mom came in to console me. And I just remember seeing my dad's dark silhouette in the doorway, and he just looked so pissed. <laughs> <laughs> like he was just like, "I don't care if you're my kid, you're being a huge cock." Blocker. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I work all day. <laughs> I just want to be close to your mom. Yeah. And my mom was like, "Oh no!" And she was like babying me in my dozer. That's so funny. I could just feel like steam coming <laughs> off. Of yeah, I wouldn't want to be anywhere near him. For like a day. No, we've kept our space for a while. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then I'd be like, Dad, you want to go play catch? You'd be like, well, go hang out with your mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, parents, I, my parents are divorced, but I uh, I found chocolate sauce in my dad's drawer next to oh. his condoms. So. Wow. Oh, whoa. Yeah. What's happening there? It sounds Is like that he... why you're so into butt stuff? No, you, you know, daddy's just always. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved the B hole. Dude, that was sexy red. <laughs> my coochie pink, my booty hole brown. I was like, that's my song. Um, no, I, you know, I've never discussed butt stuff with him, but uh, yeah, he had chocolate sauce in there. And but the butt's the one you don't talk about. That's why it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, maybe he is. Dude, that'd be a, I should ask him, be like, Dad, did you six? I like, cause, yeah, I think he likes yeah, to be Yeah, like, it might start somewhere. Uh, he's a surgeon, though. I, I feel like they're into cleanliness. I know a guy who found handcuffs, a whole nother level, in his parents' room. Wow! I know I never walked in. I'm I'm fortunate. I've also never been walked on jerking off. No, oh, nice. walked in on. So You're I've missing lived out a, on a lot of life. I've lived right? a carefree life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've lived a uh, charmin soft life. Yeah, I'll walk in on you. I would love that. Yeah, yeah I got your back. I got walked in on. I was walking. I was watching Backroom Casting Couch. Oh, yeah, that's familiar. Sure, yeah. And uh, we had like a, it's like it's, a couple of my friends came in through the back entrance, and there's a window to my room, and they like knocked on the window. And I was like, oh, oh no! no. <laughs> yeah, so they saw what I was watching. Oh, yeah. And uh, you better believe there's some bee hole in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll do another one. Um. This is a, this is a written piece. Oh my god! Uh, so we're <laughs> we're all at Will's wedding. My name is Zeke Cyrus. We're all groomsmen, and uh, I'm giving the best man speech. So here we go. Um, hi guys, hi everyone. Go Zeke. Actually, uh, I read somewhere that the perfect best man speech should last as long as it takes for the groom to make love. So I only have five seconds left. <laughs> no, 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 no. Ah, come on. I'm just kidding. Truly, Will, you are my best friend, and it's an honor to give this speech. Um, Maggie, you're my best friend, too. You're an amazing person. You are the most generous person I know, and you're pretty good at Fortnite for a chick. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in all seriousness, yeah. the moment Will introduced us to you, uh, we all knew that you guys were going to get married, mostly because Will texted us while you were in the room, I'm going to marry her, <laughs> and we all laughed. Uh, Will and I were actually roommates freshman year of college. We didn't choose each other. We were randomly assigned to be roommates by a computer. Mm. And um, I knew we would be best friends when we both had the same Kate Upton poster, and when I found out that you were also uncircumcised, I knew we would be brothers. Okay. They should have should have called our room the harbor with all the docking that was taking place. Okay. <clears throat> Just kidding. Just kidding. We never did a, anything gay, although I hold the opinion that docking isn't technically homosexual in nature. Every time I brought it up to Will, I would say, okay. I would say, it's not gay. And he would say, yes, it is gay. And I would say, dude, no, it's not. Just pull your foreskin back and hold it while I stretch my foreskin over the head and shaft of your penis. Hey, Zeke. And he would say, no, dude, get away from me. And then I would say, Zeke. fine, have it your way. I'll hold my foreskin back, and you stretch your foreskin over the head and shaft of maybe, my penis, connecting our heads. Big dog. Like a Chinese finger trap. Maybe not, so, maybe not here is like, because they're going to think you're, they're not going to know you're joking. Yeah, and, and you've, hit that, you've hit the docking stuff hard. Let's, let's push on. Push what on. even, what is docking? Cool. Well, I'd, okay, hold on. Let me just. Uh. But then I would, I got one more thing. I would say, just let's try it. Everybody wins. And Will would say, how does everyone win? How does us docking lead to everyone winning? Okay, here we go. I'd like to thank that computer, 
Maybe I maybe AI isn't so bad after all. Our favorite movie in college was When Harry Met Sally, so I'd like to close with a quote from that film. When you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. Well, cheers to the bride and groom and to the rest of your lives together. Hey, where do you go, Zeke? Good stuff, man. <clears throat> Love you, brother. Z Z <laughs> <laughs> I think we got to do a post speech wrap up, dude. Do you want to get? You want to get? What were you doing up there? Do you want to clean the? Uh, oh. Sorry, sorry, guys. One second. What the fuck is your problem? Yeah, what were you doing? Why would you think that's a good? I told you to avoid that shit. You sent me that draft, and I said, "Don't fucking read that." I just said, how the fuck? How the fuck do you think that's okay? I'm sorry. I'm high. See, you what? sent, you sent high. me a totally different draft. Yeah. Well, was it a decoy draft? Because yeah, you knew. I, was, I sent different ones to everyone because I wanted to see who would leak the real one <laughs> and who I could trust the most. What? Yeah, that's I bizarre. Was, he, he sent me that draft. No, you didn't say anything. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. I thought it was awesome. Thank you. Do you? Th she's gonna fucking kill you. She's a chick. I could probably beat her up. Nice. Honestly. <laughs> well, that's not. That has nothing to do with it. You're going to beat my wife up. No, I'm just saying. On it, our wedding if night, if you're going to beat it, my wife. No, no, no. No, I'm saying if it, if it got physical between us at 230 pounds. Yeah, that's pretty solid. It's pretty I, not to play devil's advocate here, but I saw some people laughing. Yeah. I thought they really enjoyed it. Her dad looks pissed. I'm not even looking over your there. Your dad right does like this. You're staring daggers in you. I can feel it. Staring a hole into the back of your head. The left side of my face feels like hot sun. You know the dad's like hardcore conservative, right? I didn't. Yeah, if I did, I probably, probably wouldn't have seen His brother... Like, you probably wouldn't have. What happened, bro? His brother like runs West, ba West, West Baptist, West Borough. Oh, did you the see guys all the signs, signs out front? Yeah, the fucking that's, signs, that's guys. That's her side of the family? That's family, what that is. Man. Uh, I retract my state. That is actually not cool. Yeah. Then you come in with all the docking stuff when you got them. I thought the harbor line was going to hit. Can you just didn't land? Can you just tell them you were? Joking? Do you think I should have closed with the harbor line? Yeah, mop it up, mop it up. Okay. Cheers. Again. <laughs> that's that. <laughs> Best man speech. One hundred percent just breaks down the science of docking. During it. That's a long boy. Yeah, that's a long. It's a. Slow You've had one. a couple of those in a row. Come in with just a three-page rant. Yeah, you guys are killers, man. It's fun stuff. I like yeah. it. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. I got. I got a character. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. All right. There's nothing to it. It's uh, my name's Joe Wright, and I like to snack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess that's where we start. What's up, Joe? Hey, how's it going? How's, how's work been? Oh, it's been fun, man. Yeah, I'm working over there at the uh, the main office, insurance, APSO yeah. insurance. Stressed out some days. Mm -hmm. I bet. Yeah. yeah, but you know I got my suitcase with me. <laughs> yeah. You know it's in there, right? No. It's packed to the gills. <laughs> Paper? Oh, man, I got it all. Snap peas, trail mix, <laughs> nutter butters. <laughs> Do you bring that everywhere? Uh oh, <laughs> Do I bring it everywhere? The Brother, if you see me, I'm either snacking or I'm on my way to snacking. Yeah, I thought you were lugging around camera equipment or something. No, 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 no. That that's that was tough for me. Yeah. When I had to do that, because it didn't leave much room for the, the important stuff. Okay, but it's like a Pelican case, so like it has like the styrofoam yeah. and everything in there. Yeah, well, you got to keep it nice, because I got the, I got the, I, I got it all temperatured. It's temperature controlled. Yeah. Do you think maybe is it, have you do you have like an eating disorder? No, I'm happy. I mean, you're bringing a suitcase of food around everywhere you yeah, go. Yeah, well, brother, man, Trader Joe's has been on fire this month. The peanut butter cups, unbelievable. Yeah, they're only doing them in the fall. I'm having about seven a day because I don't want to burn myself out on them. <laughs> but when I'm taking a break from those, I'll get into the pretzels, <laughs> sriracha. Ooh. I got the sriracha pretzels. Yeah, I'm having a couple handfuls of those. And then my fucking wife, right, you know? Yeah. She's like you guys, right? She's trying to get me to eat normal. So the other night, she cooks me a steak, right? Thinking I'm going to like that. What do I do? I take it into the bathroom with a fork and a knife. And I chop it into little pieces. Then I wrap bread around them, and I put toothpicks through it. I snackified it. <laughs> I snackified an entire 
24 ounce steak. Did she find out? She, no, 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 dude. She was pissed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did she find out? I was sleeping on the couch, but I don't mind because then I can snack more. She doesn't let me snack in bed. And then so, but, but the steak was actually really good. She did a good job on it. So, so I'm trying to figure out, I gotta, gotta add some sauce to it, which is tough with, you know, your homemade snacks. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can use a little like a uh, injector, you know, like a needle thing, you know, and I'm going to put a, I'm going to put some A1 in the steak bites and I'm going to put that in the suitcase too, in the Pelican. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have a problem. I was, uh, yeah, I got, a, I got a lot of problems. There's only so much time in the day to snack. And uh, yeah, I guess my other problem is I'm happy, and uh, I wish, I, I I do wish, because I think if you if you came over more, you came into the garage with me, yeah, which is where I keep most of the good stuff. Okay, so that's like, yeah, if I'm gonna walk in there. It's gonna be like a dragon's lair of snacks. Yeah, it's yeah, man cave. Yeah, snack cave. Snack cave. That's what I call it. Yeah, because this whole, you know, snacks are for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Anyone can have a snack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, brother. But a lot of people don't do it. They don't do it the way they should. Yeah, I. Yeah, I'm. I, I snack. Yeah, I. I snack. feel like I. I feel like I, I feel like I snacked, and then maybe I'm not on the same level. Where are you me. snacking at? Where you get your snacks from? Vending machine. Target. Oh, they got good stuff in the vending machine. Which one? The, the one on Larchmont. I guess the, that one's loaded to the gills. They got pop tarts in there. I. I like pop tarts. I think. Oh yeah, cool. no, they're great. I got a portable uh, toaster in my car. Do really? you do yeah. like? Meals or just snacks? Yeah, no, I snack. How many right. cal- how many calories are you doing a day? Oh, a couple thousand. Yeah, yeah. But just here's the thing: it's good. animals snack. Animals don't eat meals; they snack. So when you're on the hunt, you're burning calories. Is, is this like the Ryan Reynolds like six meals a day thing? Was he? Was, is he a? It's like how he's, he, the actor. Yeah, he said he eats like six times a day. Really? Up his metabolism. That's a good guy. Yeah. That's a good guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. He's a good I'm, dad too. He's like an all well-rounded celebrity. Yeah. Well, when you got kids, you got to be snacking too. Yeah. You don't have time to sit down and just like you know, whoa, this is my meal. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. No. It's okay. Like but, apple slices uh, mostly, right? Is that you doing a lot? Of I, I do. I do the fruits. I'll do the dried mango. They do. The Trader Joe's has a great dried mango. And then uh, you know Costco, they they do all the dried the, the raisins and uh, the prunes. You know, go in that direction. But I love an apple. I love it, but not a whole apple, right? Because then you're teetering into ounce wise, it's a meal. How many times are you snacking a day? I don't, you, you don't count snacks the way you count. That's the other thing is we get into this like numerical, you know, I'll, I know how much, how much snacks I ate because I got to know how much I got the next day, but I don't count it like it's like punitive. <laughs> right. Does that make sense? No, that it makes sense. I just like, I guess I'm wondering why, like, lugging an 80-pound suitcase around every day is how how you came to that conclusion. Right, because that's heavy. <laughs> right. That's my thing is, look, things are going all right, you yeah. know, sold the car. And uh, so I'm hiring an assistant to lug to lug the snack for me. That's yeah, expensive. it just feels like, like, a, like Where'd you find, like, a task rabbit? Yeah, 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 yeah rabbit, right? Emphasis on the rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Little snackers them, themselves. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 not so much even like I know I'm mentioning the animal primal thing, but for me it's 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 uh I don't know. I just don't, I've always wanted to be that kind of guy and the world's always been like kind of pushing me into a general, you know, three meals a day kind of thing. Right. And I just resist that. I'm just uh you know, snap peas in the morning. A lot of snap peas. Love the snap peas because I mean, they're good for you, right? And then, uh, maybe some uh, kale chips in the afternoon, and then you're, you're like, This guy's getting boring. So, Lindor chocolates in the evening. <laughs> I saw I the good, I shit. feel like you're maybe eating to cover up something, and I don't want to bring this up, but it's very American, yeah. I just, I mean. After the whole like stillborn birth e- thing with you and your wife, like, do you think maybe this is something that you're doing to like, I don't know, fill that? I I, I I see what you're getting at because that was a point of contention when I tried to snack on that. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. that was uh, I'd never been restrained by like uh, hospital people before. How that? You know, feel? you tried to snack on the stillborn. Yeah. Yeah. The baby. Well, or, or, the stillborn. Or during the. The, uh, the post things didn't happen the way we wanted. 
do we get sad? We could. Yeah. Absolutely. That's an option. I just, I don't know if you're, you say you're doing well. I don't know, though, because the last time I saw you, it was like a doctor chasing you with a big butterfly net. Right, right. That, you know, one day you're the snacker, the next day you're the snack is the way I said it. That is a good point, actually. And, uh, yeah, they never caught me. They never caught me. <laughs> 80 pound pelican case and all, and I still got away. I'm like, dude, I'm like Barry Sanders with Barry Sanders on his back. That's the kind of agility I got. Um, you're, you're being so charming about this, but there's so much pain behind your eyes at the yeah. same time. It's hard right, to scream right. for help. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I'm screaming for help as much as I'm screaming for more. <laughs> more I mean, snacks I, or? More, I mean, <laughs> more everything, but in the form of snacks, please. It's more abundance in your life. It's just when you, when you, you, you don't want to appreciate <laughs> when you got, you know, the Costco will do the big tubs. Yeah. And we've got a big tub, like six pounds of M&M's. Do people ever just, you're going to be sad when you're looking at that? All that abundance, all those colors, you could put your whole freaking head in there and just never pull it out. Okay, That's I think something I, I've never thought about. But I guess I'll try could, it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You've been awfully quiet over here. I mean, I haven't seen you in three months. Right, yeah. It's been a long time. And I'm not trying to... You do be, work at a restaurant. I'm not trying to be insulting, but uh, you you are huge. Right. You, you, wow. You know, wow. You know in the movie Santa Claus. Ted when, with the straight talk, huh? He hasn't changed this, <laughs> he hasn't changed an iota. I mean, you know in the movie The Santa Claus when Tim Allen becomes Santa Claus? Right. You, when he's happy. You, right. Yeah. Well, you've taken on that kind of transformation. Portly. Yeah, I got the gout. Jolly. I'm jolly. Very jolly. I'm red. I'm just red all the time. I don't even get sun. I'm just red. I mean, you were... I mean, yeah, I think it's blood clots. Well, you know I modeled. <laughs> you know I modeled for a long time. And you know how stressful that got. You were a Versace model. I was, I was skinny. And that's was... when I first started snacking. Because <laughs> they didn't let you eat. When you had a runway coming up, oh my God. If Alexander McQueen saw you eating anything with bread... He'd come at you with a freaking sharpened clothes hanger. So I just started hiding little food things in the vents. You know, you screw off the top yeah. of the ceiling thing, you know, like secret agents climb through. Yeah. And I just go up there and I'd put little Ritz crackers, right? And then I have a little cheese whiz uh, dispenser up there. How do you not realize it's upsetting for us to hear that you're living like a squirrel your entire life? Yeah, it sounds like this you're is, just like this slowly. Is that's funny. It sounds funny. like a weird way to kill yourself is what this sounds like from being real with you. I, you know, I don't mean to get in so much like the flipping the thing, you know, but I think it's, it sounds like a real way to live yourself. Okay. Okay. Talk. I'll, I'll try it. So, snacks? Yeah. I'll come to the garage. I'll snack. All right. Well, you, you get a snack, you give a snack. All right. We'll bring it. We'll bring an offering. Yeah. That's what it, you want yeah. an offering. That's what it sounds like. Something like that. Yeah. It doesn't have to be any fire, but yeah. Okay, I'll bring it. I miss you, man. I miss the old you. Well, come on. Why are we living in the past when I'm snacking in the future? All right, all right. I'll, I'll embrace the future. You guys are good guys. Well, these. I miss you guys. <laughs> yeah, I got more and more jerseys. <laughs> yeah, that was a guy I was working on this morning. That's awesome. Dude. The guy who likes to snack. That was awesome. Yeah, that thank you. Awesome. That great. You. Yeah, I'm a big snack. I love that one. Dude, that made so me want boring. snacks. Yeah. Um, let me, <laughs> this setup was fucking perfect. Taking a quick break. This show is sponsored by, you know it, Better Help. Okay? I have had some going home for Thanksgiving stress, holiday stress. This time of year is very anxiety and lot going for me. on. Lot going on, man. They really pack it on at the end of the year. But luckily, with Better Help, I can talk to a trained professional. And just help ease ease my stress, ease my ease my stuff that I'm but going you, through. You have to go in, right? No, no, just online. Just it's on, so you can talk to anyone anywhere online. All through BetterHelp, it's so easy. Wow. They give you the tools to manage everything going on. And if you're start thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. Okay, you have to. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Okay, it can't be that easy. It's that easy if you go to betterhelp.com slash beers for 10% off your first month. Wow, we. That's betterhelp, H E L P dot com slash beers. 
Let's get back into the episode. Let's yeah, do you guys have time to do advice? I got all the yeah. time in the world. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, what do we got? First one. My new job as a nurse is causing me lots of anxiety to the point of losing sleep. How can I change my mindset and not make it not so mind-consuming outside of work? Be a school teacher. I would say you can't live for the weekend. You got to find little moments in the day to make your own, and you have to make that the fun part of the day. You got to you got to set these little these little goals for yourself or just be a school teacher. I stop stop going out every weekend getting drunk and hooking up with a cop. <laughs> You're a nurse, that's what you've been up to. Knock it off. What do you guys think? So she's exhausted from working too much? She's anxious. She's anxious. Her job makes her anxious. Does she smoke cigarettes? I think we're a little limited on information. Hey, look at her profile. Uh, see if she looks like she smokes cigarettes. I'm saying she should. Yeah. Okay. It's, or vape. That's a moment for you. Like you're stressed out. You're like, oh, well, screw everybody. Do you guys ever hit the vape or hit it, smoke a cigarette yeah, when you're a, stressed? I have a love hate relationship with the vape, dude. I'm, I'm always in and out. Me you too. know, I'm, I'll, I'll be a month off, month on. You know, it's the devil's <laughs> dick, dude. And I'm always look trying. To, Paramaris. It, it, yeah, it's kind of like your dad's dick. Yes, you know that that's that's what the vape is Something to me. In your mouth. To the character earlier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. The the alcoholic one that sucked his dad's dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. That was yeah. I uh, I, anytime I hit the vape when I'm stressed, it immediately makes my heart race faster. Yeah, I've never yeah. found a relaxing feeling from vaping. Yeah, I. I I, I booted it a couple months ago, but I did it for a couple years, and I wouldn't have been able to get through a breakup if I didn't have the vape. Mm. I, I literally, as I was breaking up with her, I was getting addicted to the vape. I was like, I need this to to be able to do this. That is smart. It I does. So I think it'll help this person. Soften the blood. Yeah. yeah. Get addicted. I think the thing for me is it, it increases my anxiety, but uh, but then there's the, that dopamine where you're sort of like, man, in a, f- a couple hours I get to hit the vape. And that excitement really brightens my day. So... You know, you have your breaks from your nursing, you know, you're putting in an IV and then you're like, man, I get to hit the vape right after I clean this guy's ass. Nurses do very uh, high infidelity rates. Mm. Number like three behind like cops and firemen. Really? Yeah. I wonder if it's the stress on the body. Yeah. And I think it's seen a lot of death maybe too. Yeah. You're just like, well, what's the point of anything? Let's just bone. Yeah. She, she... She yeah, maybe, Do maybe, know maybe bone more. I yeah. heard that uh, nurses, one thing that they don't tell you about is like you see so many people that come in with something stuck up their ass. Yeah. That yeah. They tried to put up there for sexual pleasure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's like one of the most common things they see. Yeah, no wonder she has anxiety. Next. It's 80% yeah. of the job. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's why I go. That's why I wanted to be a nurse. Just so you could do it yourself. Well, yeah, I just I wanted to be involved in that whole. Okay. I just want to be in and around bee holes, you know. Just well, speaking of this person says, my boyfriend desperately wants me to peg him. I'm scared it'll give me the <laughs> yes, ick. Thoughts? Scared it'll what? It'll give me the ick. Oh, Thoughts? get over yourself, honey. Peg him. Sex shaming. Yeah, yeah that relationship's gonna last. What do these women <laughs> want? It's like they want you to be open minded, but then you ask to get pegged, and then all of a sudden, you know. It's too far afield. I don't know. Well, we were saying I'd peg her if she wanted it. Yeah, I feel like uh, you know, doing doggy style with your girlfriend pegging you might be rough, rough. But we were saying this: it'd be so nice to be able to ride your lady. <laughs> no, yeah, right. we were talking about that. Yeah, that little doing the little like butt scoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a dog, like dog carpet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, doing some belly dancing on top. That That'd takes nice. some serious core. A lot. Yeah, and you're still strong in your schlong. Yeah, that's true. Uh, you could potentially. I don't know. I don't, I'm not a physicist. Say it. I, it's gonna be crazy, but say it. You could be. She could be in you. You could be in her. Just oh, that. Whoa. Yeah, I don't know if that that might be a first. Yeah, a double Ooh. penetration with two oh, people. Oh wow! Can AI peg you yet? Not yet. They're working on it. Sam Altman's so, working on it in his free time. Right. He's a dog. He's a dog. Do you, what do you? Do you, do you should, should she have to peg him? Shoot, you shouldn't have to do anything, but yeah, right. right. <laughs> it's a stupid question. Yeah, I think she should be. You more have to fuck him the way you want. <laughs> you gotta beg him. Dude. 
I remember one time I was at an open mic and a, a, a girl was talking about pegging her boyfriend and uh, I guess he wasn't that into it and he was at the open mic and he looked sad. <laughs> Dude. She was on stage. She's like, I pegged my boyfriend. He was like, yeah, she did. And I was like, it's tough, man. We, we were saying that the other day when we were just like, yeah, you're at a show and uh, one of the girl comedians brings her boyfriend. She gets up stage and she's like, so six years ago I was single and I was sucking dick every day. And you're just yeah. looking at this guy like this, staring at him. He's like, yeah. He's mm-hmm. just held up by wires. <laughs> yeah. 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 So sad. Yeah. That's tough. I would have gone with a different bit. Yeah. Emily, what do you think? Should he? Should she peg him? Well, like you said, she shouldn't do anything she doesn't want to do, but she should be a little more open-minded or find another boyfriend who doesn't want to be pegged. Have they started with the finger, maybe? I think they don't want to dip their toes in. He wants to jump in the cold water. Right. That's badass. Well, while we're on dongs, this is a real situation that's happened to my buddy. He recently, over Thanksgiving break, found out via uncles and cousins and stuff that his dad used to pull his dick out a lot at bars Whoa. in his college years. Pull it out quite often. Finds out also that his dad has what has been described to him as the biggest penis these fellas have ever seen. Whoa. So now he's coming to terms with his dad having a much larger penis than him to the point where he's not only comfortable, but he's excited to show others in a public setting. Wow. That's that's something. I don't know. Was that like a thing? People whipping their dicks out of No, no, no. Because that's that's happened. I used to do that a lot. That's really? happened to me so once you before. Nice, but you must have a nice no, it's beard. fine, but it's nothing special. That's kind of why I did it, was just to get out in front of it. But I, I, I used to get naked a lot. I got in trouble for it. Suspended from school. <laughs> in high school? Yeah. What, what type streaking. of... Dude? Streaking. Streaking. Streaking in school? Streaking. streaking's just good fun, though. It was fun. It was always fun. That's why I think I was like, if you're moving fast, it's not bad. Either. Yeah, if you're walking naked... Yeah, then everyone's like, like, all right, creep. Man, man yeah. on PCP. <laughs> yeah, but if you're like running, everyone's like, oh, it's all fun. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, fun. Yeah. And I was young. I was like a kid. I had a bad experience in, in high school. I, uh, we seniors like streaking, I ran past my crush, and she's like, it's so small. Oh. oh. It was cold. That's so oh. mean. No, and also they don't know what big is. Yeah. It is small relative to like how much we talk about dicks, but yeah. it's not small compared to other dicks. That's why you just have, you, hold on, let me get hard. I'll show you. I just know. wait right yeah. there. Wait, let me get hard real quick. I mean, it was cold and I had a, it was just like a thumbtack, you know? Yeah. Like right out of an ice bath. Dude, yeah. One time, uh, me and my, like we went, uh, we were skating at this local rink. My buddies played hockey. I never played, but we were just kind of fucking around the ice. Nude? And they went, uh, no. But then we, oh. after, they all hopped. They're all hockey players, so I'm not used to the group showers thing. Mm. So they're all in there. This is sixth grade, butt naked, taking a shower. So I went in there, and I grabbed as much soap as I could, and I made a, a soap foam dome over my penis so that nobody could see it. Wow. So and I was just constantly clever. trying to keep as much soap on my cock as right. possible. Very <laughs> clever. A beard for it. it so I wish I yeah. had thought of that. An igloo. Yeah, and it worked. It worked. Nobody it worked? Said it. Everyone was making fun of my other friend for having a small dick, and I was like, Lily. Hilarious. Wow. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. Dude, that's genius. You're a survivor. It really, I walked out of that being like, "That's I got away with something in there. Yeah, I mean, going to like a group shower like that and getting reamed out for having a small dick, that's got to hurt. It's... It was, I felt like I was in like Saw and they were just like, you have three items to help yourself get out of this. <laughs> yeah. 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 Your brain was like scanning everything. <laughs> yeah. 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 And your friend's just crawling out with his, his <laughs> yeah. legs sawed off. Just, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. There's also bars and like old bars in New York have like a trough, don't they? Where guys would pull their dongs out and yeah. pee so they wouldn't have to leave the, the bar. And then some bartender just runs in and throws ice while you're taking a piss. And I'm like, he probably just saw some <laughs> a lot balls of at least. Damn. We uh, went to Colorado, um, Colorado University, to watch one of the games, and I had to go to the bathroom, and it was halftime. Everyone went, and it was old style trough bathrooms, mm. and it's like the most I've ever had to pee in my life, and I just couldn't. Yeah. I stood there, and I had to like pretend I peed, and then zip up and leave, and wait for everyone to leave. Yeah, right, dude. I, I get pee shy too. I went to, I was with my uh, girlfriend's family, and we were seeing Sebastian Mascalco, and um, I went to go, you know, take a whiz. And her dad comes in no. into the stall next to me, urinal next to me. And I just locked up. I was like, oh, fuck, I can't even pee. And then I was like, you know, I'll just wait it out. You know, it won't be weird. He won't even notice. He'll... And then I, I farted. <laughs> and um, I, I was like, this will be silent. 
dude, it stunk so bad. <laughs> and, so, and so I was like, I <laughs> freaked out, zipped up and just like ran out of the bathroom because I was like, there's a lot of dudes. Maybe he'll think it's someone else. It was horrible. And he <laughs> comes back out like two minutes later and I was like, <laughs> I was like, hey man, how's it going? <laughs> he just think you farted and you can't piss. Yeah, dude. I never thought about it that way, so that just made it worse. But Some, yeah, just yeah. like the most little boy move of yeah, all time. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> no daughter of mine's gonna be with a stinky farter yeah. who can't piss. Uh, dude, it was, I didn't even said, I didn't hear piss hitting the urinal once. <laughs> yeah, the guy's got no stream, honey. Yeah, yeah, dude. It was horrible. Did he say anything? No. But oh. there was a there was tension. Mm-hmm. I'll never understand why guys have to pee like next to each other publicly and like girls don't. Like, wh- why? It's just how it's set or up. Or just like, yeah, but why? But don't do girls chat while they're doing all their bathroom stuff with each other? Like, yeah, but like not while they're peeing. Right. Hmm. I had a friend in high school, Ari. Um, I shouldn't have used a real name. <laughs> uh, but she would she would call she would call me like every morning, and then one and she she was just a big phone talker. She called a lot of people, and then a. Uh, one day I found out she calls everybody when she's dumping. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Her friends ratted on her. Her friend Shy was like, wow. you know when Ari calls you in the morning, you know that's when she takes her morning dump? And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I would feel violated. Wow, I don't I'm know gonna, what I felt. I was more like... I'm going to start jacking off on these phone calls. Too. I just started laughing. <laughs> just picturing, because she would talk about so much stuff. <laughs> she's probably trying to like cover up the noise by like right. being on the phone. Oh. Yeah. And she's just bored, you know? Interesting. She dropped long shits. <laughs> Did you hear anything? That never. I, dude, never the wiser. Yeah. I don't know what I thought she was doing, painting or something. It's <laughs> probably got to be a thrill for her at this point. Yeah, she, so that was, I mean, we were in high school, it was 20 years ago. She might still be dumping and dumping. She's probably leveled up. She's probably doing like some that. other stuff. Thanks. That's good. Yeah? I actually really <laughs> enjoyed that. Just time for my morning dumping dump. <laughs> dump and dump. Um, what, let's do one more. What do we got? Anything juicy? Yeah, this. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I'm so glad you asked. Oh, dude. Okay. My sister is cheating on her husband with my best friend. We even just went on family vacation with my sister and her husband and and kids, and I brought him with me. I didn't know at the time, but when we got back, my friend told me what's been going on. Should I be mad at him? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably... There, it's probably a complex situation. There's probably context we're missing. Yeah, like people are people. And like to judge someone else when you're not in their situation, I don't know. Is that who you want to be? Yeah. Uh, if I'm getting this correctly, I think to keep her sister safe, she should fuck her sister's husband. Mm. Mm. I I think that's a genius idea, Liam. Is Lane mm. Maxwell style. Just compromise that fuck. Mm. Now, now everyone's got blood in their hands. That's, that's really that's smart. Good, I'm like surprised. Like, should I be mad at him? Why isn't she like? Why isn't he like? Should I be mad at my sister? Well, because women, he, oh, right? right yeah. Don't get me started, brother. Take accountability for your actions, ladies. Don't get me started, brother. Good luck. <laughs> I'd feel like guilty not like knowing that information and then like not being able to say anything to the husband. You just, I, you just welcome the mob. <laughs> <laughs> I know what we're she going should, for clicks. Yeah. I know what she should do. <laughs> okay, suck her dad's dick. Ooh. Mm. You'll get a little treat after if you're lucky. Yeah, mm. truly in any of these, that's the best answer. If you want to one up your sister, like you think you've got some drama. Yeah. <laughs> I suck dad's dick. Yeah. I just blew him and I did the twisty motion and everything. That is, yeah. cr- people will message and stuff and be like should i be upset about this yeah and i'm like yeah. like uh a guy yesterday was like yeah my girlfriend called me on the phone and like said she cheated on me and it was my fault because i'm not artistic like what should i do i was like oh you should probably be a little pissed maybe, <laughs> maybe break up with her dude uh, <laughs> my sister just edged my dad <laughs> should i be, be disturbed <laughs> and dad's all pissed at is that weird <laughs> check his ig story he accidentally <laughs> posted it <laughs> just edging dude well well, your dads, guys. That's uh, something that you could take throughout the rest of your day. Yeah. If you're listening right now, picture you blowing your dad. And peg your, your boyfriend. Yeah. Peg your BF, Thank be you. your D. Thank you for saying that. All right. But yeah, JT, thank you guys so much guys, for joining us. Thanks, thanks for you guys. Awesome. See you guys. Always honor. see you guys. You guys are great, guys. Yeah, yeah. you guys are the best. Big round of applause for our, our two little favorite guys. Anything you want to shout out? Uh, we'll be in, when's this coming out? Uh, Thursday. Thursday. We'll be in Denver next week. Fuck nice. yes. Get get the Comedy Works. Get tickets. Hell yeah. Yeah. Bring Strider with us. Strider's nice. coming. Who's Strider supposed, suped to, be supposed to be here? Yeah. 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 
uh, a little work situation. Stroud will be back. Get your tickets at chatjt.com. Um, that's, that's it. Yeah. Plug in anything else? We have our We're like pitching stuff. Maybe yeah. you guys can like write into platforms, tell them to buy it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> tell Netflix yeah. that it'd be a huge boon to their service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Buy our stuff. We're all in a neat little project that's coming out in the future, too. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We all yeah. acted in something together. Yeah, we saw, we hung out on set a little bit with each other. Yeah. It was fun to watch you guys act because we got like front row seats. So that was yeah, really that cool. Was cool. How did we do? You guys, did you guys well. were awesome. Uh, we were laughing. Thanks, dude. You had yeah. like two big moments you when you were hopping out and oh, the yeah. way you were going back. And yeah. I don't want to give away too much. And then you after you get burned, dude. Yeah, burned the party, just, yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. Well, you guys were the wind beneath our wings. Oh, thanks. We knew we had you in our back pocket, in our corner. That's what we were there for. Yeah. You, I got, feel like you I, guys made that day far less stressful for us. Oh, yeah, you did, you. definitely. Like, not, thank you. Yeah, we were like, we felt like Teddy Atlas or Customato, like a box. <laughs> Kid, you got the stuff. You just got to go in there and keep swinging. Yeah. That's actually how I feel. Yeah, they're going to fold. They're going to fold if you keep the pressure on. Yeah. <laughs> this director, he doesn't want any more of this. You just keep swinging that comedic heat. He's going down. <laughs> Oh, okay, awesome. On that note, thank you guys so much. Guys, thanks for listening. Um, uh, we'll see you next week. See you. St- uh, stay tuned for... Bye. Thanks, guys. <laughs>